Alright, this is Gran Turismo 2, one of the best games on the PlayStation and my favorite game in the series. Now, this game was rushed out for a holiday release back in 99, which basically means that it lacks a little bit of the polish that the first game had. Um, you know, nothing really major. The biggest thing is that you can only complete 98.2% of the game. And uh, I'm not sure why. I, the rumors with that are they planned some drag races and they just didn't get around to including them in the game. Um, other one is that there was an event generator which is in the game, but the uh, you just don't acquire trophies for it or uh, completion percentage. Not a huge deal. The only other issue is that there are a little bit of loading times. Um, you know, nothing major. It's just long enough to be slightly irritating. So this is very similar to the first game, um, however they have made a few enhancements. Uh, big enhancement was they tripled the car library. Uh, first game had about 200 cars, this one has about 600. So quite a few cars to choose from. They also retain most of the tracks from the first game. I think the only one missing is Special Stage Route 11, which is an awesome track. I wish it was in here, but it's not. And then they made a bunch of new tracks, um, a lot of great ones like Grindelwald, uh, Seattle Circuit, Rome Circuit, there's this cool Rome Night track, and I feel the strength of this game is its track design. Uh, these are the best courses I've ever played in any racing game, and something that really bothers me about the newer games in the series is they've kind of gotten away from that. They still do make some really good tracks, but it seems their focus has shifted more towards real world tracks. And, um, you know, a lot of them are pretty flat. There's not a lot of scenery to look at. Big, huge, like, sandy areas off to the side for you to spin out in. And uh, a lot of times there's, like, three, four different versions of these tracks. Um, me, personally, I would take one Grindelwald over, you know, three, four Tsukuba circuits any day. Now, if you're not familiar with the series or racing simulators in general, uh, basically with this one is... You know, you start off, you have like 10,000 credits, that's this game's version of money, and you have no licenses. And then you have to go um, complete license tests, which allow you to compete in events, and uh, allow you to soup up your car that you've, whatever car you chose at the beginning of the game. Um, and there's all sorts of upgrades to get. You can, of course, you can increase your horsepower, uh, throw on new tires, reduce the weight, um, you know, drop the suspension down. Uh, all sorts of little things you can do and all sorts of um, options for tinkering with your car settings so it's it's very addictive and one thing I love about this game compared to the first game is they made it a lot faster to acquire money. Uh, the first game was set up where you'd always compete in these cups which are like three to five race events and uh, you know after you beat all three you not only win money but you win a car. Well, in this one, you just complete one complete one race, and then you win a car right away. And um, another nice thing too is the first game. You know, no matter what car you had, no matter what how much you paid for it, they would always sell for twelve thousand dollars. In this game, they improved that. You have cars that sell from anywhere from one thousand to five hundred thousand dollars. So, or credits, I should say. So you can accumulate money really quickly once you learn what car or what tracks give up what cars. And the sequel retains the fun yet challenging gameplay and the realistic handling of the original game. This game came out in what I like to call the Rob Zombie era of video games, where it seemed like every driving, racing, or extreme sports game had frickin' Rob Zombie in it. You know, I'm not knocking the guy's music, but did he really have to be in every stinking video game? And overall, the soundtrack leans more towards a more uh, commercial approach. Uh, the first game was basically instrumentals and stuff, kind of techno y kind of music. Um, this one, it's a lot of rock tunes. And, uh, you know, me personally, I'm not a big fan of most of the music in the game. And to make matters worse, there's only about 15, I think about 15 songs in the game. And when you're doing an endurance event, you would think those songs would just, you know, cycle through. But no, whatever song you hear at the beginning of the race is the same song that's going to loop over and over again throughout the whole race. So what I usually do is I turn the music down, 
throw on my own CDs or MP3s and enjoy some racing. After completing a race, you get an awesome replay. These looked pretty incredible back in the day. Now they may look a little dated, but, you know, still watchable. Great addition to the series starting with this game was the inclusion of rally tracks. They require a bit of a different technique, and I, I kind of stink at them admittedly, but I still have a lot of fun racing on them. It was really hard to top the greatness of the first game in the series, but I think they did that with this one. Um, you know, had tons of great cars, tons of great new courses, and this game just has hundreds of thousands of hours of replay value. And one thing that's really great about this game is that it's dirt cheap and it's very, very easy to find. You can usually find it for under five bucks. So that was Gran Turismo 2 for the original PlayStation, one of the best racing games ever made. Hope you guys enjoy the review and thank you for watching.